The difference between process improvement and process innovation for me is that process improvement tends to be a reactive. It tends to focus on the constraint that I have, it tends to focus on the problem that I'm facing, um, and I have an existing process that I'm trying to change in order to be more efficient or less risky or more performant. Uh, when I think about process innovation, I'm thinking about opportunity-driven activities. So I may have a new technology that's now commercially viable, or I may have a market opportunity that I want to step into. I have brought intellectual capital on board, maybe through a merger that I now want to leverage. And so when I think of process innovation, I'm thinking of new ways of doing business rather than improving the old ways of doing business. I think the issue is that when you try to innovate, you're designing something new. And when you're designing, you're essentially going through two phases. So in the first phase, you're trying to come up with alternative designs, and that's the opening the aperture phase. You're trying to see what are possible new ways of doing things. And these possible alternative designs you're trying to whittle down that through a selection phase. You're basically going from a current problem to a solution space, and from this solution space, you're picking one solution and you're detailing it out until you've got your implemented solution in place. So opening up and narrowing it down. And the way how most organizations operate these days is they put a bunch of people in a room and they let them brainstorm and come up with some ideas. And these ideas depend on what they had for lunch and uh, what day of the week it is. So it's not a very replicable process. It's uh, certainly not reliable in terms of its results. But we know that there are creativity techniques that you can systematically apply to a problem in order to come up with a set of solutions. Uh, so these creativity techniques, they range from something like TRIZ to something like systematic doubt, which is practiced in the architectural community, to the systematic application of process improvement patterns to a given business process. I go through every step of the process and say, can I eliminate this step? And if so, what would I have to do? Can I differentiate between variants of the step? And if so, what would I have to do? So I can have a systematic approach to generating a solution space. And then I can have a similar systematic approach in my evaluation of the solution space to come down to one particular implementation. And what we don't want people to do is to jump to conclusions. So we have a problem statement and they formulate a solution that already implies an implementation. So that's, um, in a way, discipline that comes into this process. It's an artful process in its content, but it's a scientific process in its execution. What you want is you want this to be repetitive. So if you think about a painter, for instance, right? A painter, um, like a good painter like Miro, did not just sit down and paint a masterpiece, but did a lot of sketches of aspects of the painting or the entire painting until he derived at the final solution and created his masterpiece. And uh, similar to a musician, you know, writing songs is a creative process, uh, but really good musicians and really good composers, they force themselves to write a piece of music every day and not every piece of music is going to be brilliant, but at least you're in this composing process. And at some point, you're going to come up with something really good. It's this discipline that we need. Business process innovation serves a purpose. And business process innovation essentially serves a business purpose. So the motivation for business process innovation comes out of the fact that I have an opportunity to enter a new market or I have a technological opportunity to create something that provides a competitive advantage for me as a company. I think the role of a center of excellence and a business process design center, if you will, is more that of a service provider to the organization. It's an um, arbiter of methods. They know how to map processes. They know how to redesign processes. They know how to re-engineer them. But they are not necessarily the genesis for process innovation. Innovation can come from many places. It could be the salesperson that's out talking to a customer, uh, finding a new need in the market and finding the need to innovate. It could come out of the R&D department, finding some new technology or some new intellectual capital that 
will provide a technical breakthrough that the company didn't have before. We may be confronted with a lot of business problems and we may be confronted with technical problems and when we think about them and we try to explain the problem, very often we jump to a conclusion and we describe the problem in such a way as to include aspects of a potential solution. So for instance, if I say I need a car to go to Brussels airport tomorrow morning and I would like this car to have a big engine and a nice radio and leather seats, then I am automatically excluding the potential solutions of taking the train or hiring a taxi or maybe taking the bicycle even if that's an option. Um, so by including aspects of the solution in my problem statement I'm creating myopia, I'm just focusing on what I know um, and that will preclude me from building up a solution space of possibly competing alternatives. Um, then I will only focus on the solution that I had already in mind and just detail some aspects of it. The way I would think about it is uh, the same way people would think about business strategy. You know, what creates competitive differentiation? You can compete on price, you can compete on technical features, on innovation, uh, you can compete on quality. You've got businesses that operate in the same industry and maybe even in the same markets but they still find ways to differentiate themselves from the competition because they focus on one of the three a price quality or technical innovation and it's the same thing with processes you operate certainly the same processes that your competition does you sell products or services you deliver products or services you develop new products or services everybody in your industry does that but where you place the emphasis um, makes a difference to the customer. So the example I would like to give is if you think of airlines, um, they have highly interchangeable products. Uh, you can fly two airlines if you want to fly from Brussels to New York um, and you essentially get the same nominal product a seat on a plane that gets you across the Atlantic in a scheduled time frame. But your service experience is going to be different based on which airline you use even though they have the same processes of booking the ticket, issuing the ticket, checking you in, issuing a boarding pass, boarding you on the plane, deplaning at the destination and then the in-flight service. Um, some of the organizations in this space have taken a very very customer centric perspective and they focus their process design on the encounters that the customer has with them and as a result Flying with them is a much more memorable experience than flying with others.